Have you ever faced a situation where after a lot of work your image is rendered, but your client wants you to make a small change like the core of the wall, or make an object more or less reflective? Usually we need to open an image editor and make all of these changes there, or in some cases even to re-render the whole image. But what if I tell you that actually we can make all of these changes directly into V-Ray Frame Buffer? Let's see how to do that. First, we need to prepare our project for rendering. As you can see, we have a simple interior created for the purpose using V-Ray. To start, open the render settings and navigate to render elements. Here, I already added a V-Ray denoiser to clear the noise if there is some after the render. To be able to select only specific objects or materials from my render, like the wall, and change their color, I will add V-Ray Crypto Mat. This will cover all the objects or materials with different masks in one single render element. This is actually one of the most flexible V-Ray render elements and a lot of people unfortunately don't use it at all. As I mentioned at the beginning of the video, I also want to be able to change the amount of reflections on some object. That is why I will add another render element which is called V-Ray Back to Beauty. In it, most of the essential render elements are packed, like reflections, refractions, lights and more. Once the render starts, this will let me change them. Ok, click render. After some time the image is cleared enough and I can stop the render and start reshaping it. First will be the basic part, changing the core of the wall. Double click on the right of the V-Ray frame buffer or just click Ctrl plus L. Here we can see a layered structure where basically said we can add core corrections. To add the core correction layer we can just click on the drop down and choose the type we need. But the question now is how to limit its effect only on some specific objects. Let's add a constant layer. This one will make a color tint. Now, before I tint the image, I will right click on it, new layer and choose a cryptomat mask. Remember how at the beginning of the tutorial we have added a render element that will create masks over all of the objects. As we can see the mask icon appeared in front of the layer. Pay attention that very cryptomat is selected. There are two tabs here compared to other layers like the exposure where we have just one. The reason is that we have the layer and the mask so if I select on V-Ray Cryptomat we can see some mask settings. Now with the picker we need to choose what to call correct. Click on the wall to select that object. We can easily select more than one. If you are not sure which object is selected you can just click on show preview when selected. Ok, now we can see that the wall is selected. If we unintentionally select another object, we can remove the selection with the minus picker. Unselect the picker and uncheck show preview when selected. Switch to the properties tab to make the color correction on the selected object. In our case, change the color of the wall. Also from here, we can change the blending mode, but the multiplay works best in that case. Another great thing is that we can easily increase or decrease the opacity of that layer. The best thing is that we can make more than one layer and mask the same object. Let's make it darker with an exposure. Again, just need to create the cryptomat mask, select the object and make the change. In this way, we can make a lot of different changes on objects or materials like increasing or decreasing the exposure or the saturation, switching colors and many more. But let's see one more complex case. What if we want to increase or decrease the reflections on some objects, to add more overall or direct light or make something more reflective? Let's explore that. At the beginning of the video we added a render element called Back to Beauty. Here in the source section we can notice the back to beauty folder and it contains some render elements that form the image when they are blended. For example, if I disable the reflection, all the reflections in the image will disappear. Also, we can add a render element from the already existing or duplicate one. 
Let's add one and from the drop down element menu choose V-Ray Reflection. Probably you have already guessed how we will increase the reflections here. We will add a cryptomat mask on that render element just like we did with the core of the wall. Ok, now the reflection is already exaggerated. To add even more control, let's add with a right click over that render element an exposure layer. Now, if we increase the exposure, the reflections will be even brighter. Don't limit yourself here just with the reflection. You can easily increase the overall light in our project or change the transparency in the windows for example. Also, if you have an atmospheric effect, it can be tinted from here or have better control over the caustics if you have some and many more interesting cases. One thing that I like to make clear for both of these cases is that if we make too drastic changes on the objects, probably the result will not be great and you should evaluate each situation. Also, be careful if the object you are changing is clearly visible in reflections because the appearance of the objects in the reflections will not change automatically. To summarize, the CryptoMat is a great render element that can help us to limit the effect of different layers only on some objects or materials. This can not only save us a lot of time to make corrections after the render is finished, but also to explore countless options for the core just with one render and see what will look good in our images. Ok guys, these are just few of my favorite tips and tricks for V-Ray, so if you want to see more content check out my other videos and stay tuned for my next tutorial.